We'll also be in Pomona, California for the first national championship event of the National Hot Rod Association for 1974, the 14th annual Winter National Drag Race Championship. We'll feature top fuel, funny car, and professional competition eliminated with all the top names competing. Thank you very much, Jim McKay, and oh, what a day we have here in Southern California with the San Gabriel Mountains shining in the distance and the temperature reaching up into the middle 80s. A record crowd on hand for the 14th annual NHRA Winter Nationals at the Los Angeles County Fairgrounds in Pomona, California. Hello, everybody, I'm Keith Jackson. Well, here we go with a million dollar year for the NHRA. At the end of last year, nine men had broken that magic six second barrier in the top fuel dragster. At the Winter Nationals, we've got new faces, quick speeds, new competition. Christmas tree is lit for the new year, so let's have a look. The Christmas tree is the electronic starting device that is mastered here by Buster Couch, who is the chief starter for the NHRA. The top two lights indicate staged and pre-staged. When they're staged, that means they're in equal posture, ready to run. All the lights are used in handicap racing today. However, only the bottom three, the yellow light, the green light, and if you leave too soon, you'll get a red light, and that will put you on your trailer. So now we go to the top fuel quarterfinals with Bob Noyce having already defeated Frank Bradley, and we pick up the action here with Don Garlitz running against Pat Dakin. Young Pat right here from Dayton, Ohio, was one of the primary chores that everybody dreads to get because Big Daddy Garlitz is always around when it comes to a major championship. And of course, Don is looking for his fourth Winter Nationals Championship. He is one of the most dreaded competitors, I guess, of them all. And he moves up into the bleach box and burns it out. Pat Bacon waiting. He's already had his burnout. And Don Garlitz is shut down, and he can't stop his dragster. Garlitz's driller is running through the trap. If he crosses the finish line, he's disqualified, and he's out of it. So Pat Bacon gets a gift. A couple of weeks ago, Don Garlitz was disqualified because a brake caliper snapped and he couldn't stop his fueler, and it could be the same thing has happened to him today. Nonetheless, Don is gone, and what a break for Pat Dakin. Any time you get a solo run when you're scheduled to run against Don Garlitz, you've had quite a gift. So Pat takes the run down. He jumps off that line very well, shuts down as he hits the speed trap and turns in a 6-5-7 run for the quarter mile. So Pat Dakin of Dayton, Ohio, is in the semifinal. We'll have more action for you in a moment. We continue our coverage of the top fuel quarterfinals. We'll have now Big Jim Warren of Bakersfield, California, right there in the tower side, closest to the camera, and Jerry Ruth, the veteran out of Seattle, Washington, will be in the spectator side. Jerry Ruth likes to call himself the king. He has not been quite as quick in the Winter National competition so far as we have seen him before. He's been running in the 620s. Jim Warren of Bakersfield was the top qualifier as he puts down a 5-9-4 to lead all the top dual qualifiers. The track has been resurfaced here at the Los Angeles County Fairgrounds, and it's a much better track than it has been previously. And for some reason, the power side on the right side of the racetrack, looking down at from the start line, appears to be the quicker of the two sides of the racetrack. Buster Couch bringing these two men very carefully now into position. This is the moment where everything begins to quit. You begin to hear funny sounds. You've got to control your personal discipline. You've got to control your emotions. And you've got to run your own race. You really can't sit over there and run the other guy. Now, Buster having a little bit of trouble getting up into that stage position. Now, you'll see that he'll make a boat move up just a little bit here to get both those stage lights lit so that each man will leave at precisely the same time. In the far side, it is Jerry Ruth wiggling a little bit, but he hangs on to win. He wins it in a puff of smoke, though. Jerry Ruth may have cooked an engine as he puts down a 6.27 second elapsed time. James Warren has a 6.43. I would guess that Jerry Ruth is going to have a major mechanical problem when he goes back into the pits, but he has moved into the semifinals. Take another look at it in slow motion. You see the smoke starting to come out of the stacks. Jerry Ruth edging James Warren ever so closely. But I'd bet you that he's burned a couple of pistons. So now we move into the final of the quarterfinal matches. It'll be John Weeby of Newton, Kansas against Gary Beck of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Here are a couple of veterans. We saw Gary Beck with a spectacular performance win the Nationals at Indianapolis Raceway Park last year. And he's been very, very consistent. 
Gary Beck in his first run had a 5.96 under the six second mark for the quarter mile run, so we know that he can reach it. John Weeby on the other hand, well, you never know about John Weeby. One thing for sure that he will not make any mistakes because he's covered just about every drag strip in America. He knows the game from top to bottom. So we have two of the best in the business staged and ready to run. Beautiful start by Mack on the near side, and Gary Mack wins it. Gary Beck of Canada puts down a 5.90, and he goes into the semifinals, and that's the low ET of the meet so far. Gary Beck, 5.90. So there are your semifinalists, Noyce, Ruth, Dakin, and Beck. Who are the people that make up the sport, in it and around it? Well, here are four people I talked with. Let's meet them. I don't, I don't play cards, I don't shoot pool, I don't do anything else, it's just drag racing. I'm not married. I dare drag racing when I like it. I've only been coming since I missed Tom, which was in June. I'm a salesman by choice, I should say, and a drag racer by chance. I'm always um, at the line um, praying that Tom will be all right. <laughs> You gotta be crazy. You gotta be out of your ever loving mind. I don't know why I do it. I just dig on it. Well, I like the, the total involvement of it. I like the, the energy that's expended. I like the noise. You might notice on the back of my car it says sponsored by wife and three sons. So every time I put a dollar in this car right here for a period of time, my wife and three sons suffer for a little bit. More racing in a moment. Now we come to a new category in professional head-to-head -head racing in HRA competition this year. They call it the Pro Comp. The automobiles are determined for this category on the basis of weight, fuel, and engine displacement. And you'll see different kinds of cars running here. You'll see some dragsters, the rails, and you'll see some funny cars. But they will run head-to-head, -head, and their position really here determined by the fact that they are the quickest in what we used to know as the old competition eliminator class. And right here, we have Dale Armstrong running on the tower side, or nearest to you, against Brad Anderson. And it is the dragster of Dale Armstrong who pulls it out at the top end to win in the semifinals in 6.99 seconds. So the pro competition eliminator class proving to be very popular here because of the disparity in the types of automobiles that are being used, but their performance is very comparable, thus they're running head to head. And Dale Armstrong out of Torrance, California, goes into the finals and he'll be meeting the winner of the Ken Vaney Dave Mack a match here. Ken Vaney, incidentally, is a partner of Dale Armstrong. They make up a racing team. Dave Mack of Monrovia, Maryland, is still sitting back there on the roller trying to get his dragster started, and he's having very little luck with it. A Superstars comes back tomorrow, returns over most of these ABC stations at 2 Eastern, 1 Central and Pacific time, and you'll see the stars from the winter sports, hockey, skiing, skating, and bowling. The final qualifying round for the Superstars tomorrow over most of these ABC stations. And now Dave Mack is unbuckled. He's getting out of it. They cannot get his car started. He is eliminated from the competition, so the veteran from Monrovia, Maryland, disappointed, obviously, and he is being rolled away from the strip here at the Los Angeles County Fairground. So Ken Vaney, the partner of Bale Armstrong, is moved up on the start line, and he will take a solo run to move into the finals of the pro competition. The eliminator class, a new one that has everybody talking here at the MHRA season opener. Ken Vaney running pretty hard in that funny car because he, the low ET of this round, gets the choice of lanes for the next round. But Dale Armstrong's going to have his choice in the finals against his partner, Ken Vaney. And now we come to the semifinals of the funny car. All of a sudden here, as we begin the 1974 NHRA season, Frank Hall jumps up as, as a name. And people seem to say the name with a good deal of respect. How did you get this far with it? Well, we just got a good team, Keith. We uh, got a good bunch of people, I think. Good mechanic, a good uh, guy that's footing the bill for the whole operation here, and it's just a good team effort is what it is, really. And it takes that? Absolutely, absolutely. How many years have you been doing it? 
I don't want to tell you. A long time. <laughs> I don't know, 15 or so, I guess. This is the best piece of equipment you've ever had? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, this is a top-notch operation, as I say. Uh, we're trying to shoot for a 20, but uh, I don't know if we're going to make it. Our motor's pretty, pretty bad shape right now. Good luck to you. Thanks very much. The man running against Frank Hall is Quick Ziegler. You in good shape, Quick? Yeah, everything's real good. We've had it backed up up until now, just trying to save the motor, and we've got it hopped up pretty good now because Green's running very good. He usually does, and we're going to try to drive by him. What is it that's going to make the difference in that final run? I think this run, it'll be the starting line reaction of either him or myself, whoever gets out first, because I think we're both going to run either 20s or 30s. Look, everybody talks about racing luck. How much do you attribute racing luck in this particular phase of automobile racing? I wish luck had more to do with it, but it's just you've just got to have everything together and have a good combination and, and have, turn good numbers. If you get there first, you win. Yeah, there's very few times that luck ever comes through. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Have the fun is for you in a moment. All right, Twig Ziegler now getting suited up for his semifinal run here in the funny car competition against Frank Hall. There have been a lot of the names knocked out. For example, people who have been defeated by these four men include Don Prudhomme and Dale Poldy, Ed McCulloch, Sus Matsubara, Dave Beebe, Tom Hoover, Gene Snow. Some of the great names in drag racing have been defeated, and suddenly here we are with Dale Emery and John Collins coming to the line. Dale Emery driving a Camaro out of Columbus, Ohio, will be in the tower side or the one closest to the camera. John Collins of Long Beach, California, will be in the Mustang, and he'll be on the far side. The Funny Car Semifinal. This is, as one drag racing fan put it just a little while ago, oh, this is a raunchy one because they are so noisy and so exciting. Up $13,000, $14,000 waiting for the winner of the funny car. Both of them are loose in the middle, and it is Emery at the top end. Dale Emery at the top end, a 6.47 second. John Collins running at 6.76, 223 plus miles an hour for Dale Emery of Columbus, Ohio. So he has looked very strong so far all the way down the line. Number 31 in that black Camaro. Boy, he's an ominous looking critter, isn't he? Take another look at it in slow motion and you watch here as Emery just explodes at the top end to whip out the win. 647, the winning time for Emery against the 676 for John Collins. In case you're not familiar with the vernacular of drag racing, the funny car is called a funny car because the first time one came to the racetrack and somebody looked at it, they said, hey, that looks like a funny car, and the name stuck. And it's become a very familiar name and a most exciting racing category. The green elephant here of Frank Hall will be running against Quick Ziegler, and Ziegler will be driving the red car that is sitting on the far side away from our camera. Uh, the leech box or the burnout to get the tires as hot as they can. three seconds elapsed time in his Vega, defeating Twig Ziegler in the satellite. Ziegler had a 6.58, very close at the top end. So the finals in the funny cars will match off Dale Emery in a Camaro from Columbus, Ohio, against Frank Hall of Kirkland, Washington, in a Vega. Take another look at the finish in slow motion. Now, just about this point was where Frank Hall began to put Ziegler away and reach the speed trap to achieve a top speed of 217.39 miles an hour. So there's the matchup, Dale Emery against Frank Hall. The thrashing in the pits, of course, is going on now as we get near the top fuel semifinals and the finals and the rest of the categories. It'll be a little while before we have more racing here at the NHRA Winter Nationals. So from Sunkiss, Southern California, let's go back to Salt Lake City for more international professional track action and join Jim McKay. All 
All right, Jim, thank you very much. We're watching an exhibition run here before a record crowd at the NHRA 14th Annual Winter Nationals. And confirmed, this is the biggest crowd they've ever had on a perfect day. Apparently, the racing fans for drag racing doing like they did at Daytona 500, doubling up, finding ways to get back and forth to the racetrack under the energy crisis. Now we come to the semifinals and the top fuelers, and we will have Jerry Ruth of Seattle, Washington. Ruth will be running against Bob Noyce of Van Nuys, California. Ruth will be on the tower side or the one closest to the camera. These are the unlimited, these are the big boys, the top fuelers of drag racing. They put out horsepower that perhaps could be measured around 1,800 horsepower. They never really are able to determine exactly how much horsepower these massive engines produce. They burn nitro-methane fuel, so they're not using gasoline. A lot of the engines have been modified, the aluminum engine becoming very, very popular. They literally are handmade from the ground up. Jerry Ruth pulling out, and Jerry Ruth closest to the camera on the left-hand side of your screen right there is the winner. Jerry Ruth of Seattle, 6.21 seconds, 220 plus miles an hour. So he eliminates Robert Noyce in the semifinals of the top fuel. So Jerry Ruth is going to be going against an old foe, regardless of who wins this next semifinal bout between Gary Beck and Pat Dakin. Remember, Superstars returns tomorrow, the final qualifying round, and you'll see the stars of winter sports from hockey, skiing, skating, and bowling at 2 Eastern, 1 Central, and Pacific time over most of these ABC stations. Now Pat Dakin comes up against another tough customer right here, Gary Beck. Beck will have the power lane or the one closest to you. That apparently has been the fastest of the lane so far throughout the competition. The track just resurfaced before we started racing here for the Winter National. Dakin goes up in smoke on the right side, and Gary Beck wins it rather easily. And hear this, 5.84 seconds for Beck. That's a new record. More in a moment. There are eight NHRA national events here in 1974 offering more than a million dollars in prize money, and there are eight different classes competing in them. Recapping some of the other results now in the stock class, Les Young of Medford, Oregon, with a great hole shot, got his second straight title, beating Dick Zugman of Tustin, California. That was in the stock class. In the super stock competition, it was Marcel Cloutier of Placentia, California. Again, a great start to defeat Dave Wren of Linwood, Washington. He jumped off the line like Dave was tied to a post and won it. And the modified eliminator, Lee Shepard of Arlington, Texas, was the man who had the whole shot to defeat Jim Marshall of Riverside, California. In the pro stock, Bill Jenkins of Malvern, Pennsylvania, in a 74 Vega, had an 8-9-3 run, his fourth winter national championship to defeat Wayne Gap in a Pinto of Birmingham, Michigan. Gap was 8.94, and in the competition eliminator, Ron Bonfanti of Metairie, Louisiana, 8.50, defeated Phil Featherstone. Finals of the Pro Comp. Dale Armstrong of Torrance, California, and his partner Ken Beeney. They'll be squaring off against each other. These automobiles were prepared in the same shop. Dale Armstrong is driving an A fuel dragster, and Ken Beeney is in a double B funny car. Now, this is a new category, the Pro Comp, determined on weight, 
fuel and the displacement of the engines and of course their placement in this particular professional category which is head-to-head -head racing is determined by how well they have performed. Buster Couch brings them up now. Their partners running for the top money here in the pro comps and the money will run right around $8,000 for the winner. Armstrong in the power lane. Here is the camera. Good start. Armstrong has the lead at the top end. It is Armstrong. 6.89 seconds. 196.5 miles an hour. Vaney 7.09 in his funny car. Also 19650 miles an hour. Take another look at the finish in slow motion. Now you see Armstrong in the dragster closest to the camera. Vaney in the funny car and Armstrong the winner. Now let's have a look into the pits of the top fuel finalists. Gary Beck and Jerry Roof. Kind of like walking on eggs at this point. Five, eight, four. Yeah, we're being very careful. We're trying to duplicate her again. We've been taking it easy on the motor down the finish lights, and we're going to stretch her a little bit this time. You just really never change expression. You've got to be the coolest cat I've ever seen in this particular game. Tell me something about yourself, your self-control, your discipline. Is it practiced? Is it normal? Is it a uh, habit? What is it? Well, I, I've been racing for a long time, and and it's a job. And we try to all we try to do is win the race, and uh, try to do everything on the race car as perfect as humanly possible. And uh, it takes a lot of concentration. Jerry, how new are you going to be for this one? <laughs> well, I'm going to be able to run. Uh, we we changed the motor before the last round. And uh, this is a steel motor, and we had a little motor in there, so uh, it'll run. I don't know if it'll be good or not. He looks awful strong, doesn't he? Oh, boy, I'll tell you, he's laying him down. He's been under that fix now on two successive runs. That makes him, obviously, he's tough. He may wear the hair off his rabbit's foot. <laughs> <laughs> then you feel this thing called luck, huh? Yeah, right. We've been having a little bit of ourselves up to now. We've only run like 6.20 throughout the race, which really isn't that good in the field of five-second cars. Yeah, the guys have been breaking against us and stuff. We were pretty lucky. We've been to a lot of races, had to be lucky. Yeah. Yeah. All things being equal, you you, you figure your, your gear can go under six? Uh, yeah, I think it's going to run 590 or, or a six flat pretty easily. Of course, he went uh, 584. And it might even run 584. We'll try hard to do that. Good luck to you. All right, Keith. All right, we're ready for the funny car final. And it matches Dale Emery of Columbus, Ohio, against this man, Frank Hall of Kirkland, Washington. Hall driving a 73 Vega, and Emery will be in a 74 Camaro. Frank Hall of the world finals champion last year in Amarillo, Texas, Dale Emery took the grand national title in Montreal, Canada. A lot of money at stake here, and the difference between first and second pronounced. $13,800 for the winner, $4,550 for the runner-up. Plus the fact that a national championship, well, you know it's always worth some merchandising value. In automobile racing, these men are professional. This is their profession. and Frank Ball having fought their way all the way into the finals, and this is no time to be careful. This is where you reach into the reservoir of discipline, of energy, of every resource at hand. Hall's car breaks on the start line. Frank Hall's car breaks on the start line, and Dale Emery of Columbus, Ohio, runs what amounts to a solo to win the Funny Car Championship. So a tough break here for Frank Hall. Here's the winner, the funny car champ. A little better. Congratulations, Dale. Thank you very much. Good job. Good uh, job. Kind of nice. It doesn't hurt your feelings to run solo on a championship run, does it? No, it uh, definitely was a hard day's work, I'll tell you that. <laughs> you guys were really thrashing to get this thing pulled together. How oh. much time did you have to spare? Oh, uh, we had about 10 minutes to spare, and that was about it. But we made it, and we got down here, and that's what counts. And you've got a national championship in your right. Run. Second one. Yeah, that's great. And a little money. Here comes the happy crew. Hey! 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 Wally Parks, the NHRA president. <laughs> 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 
And while the celebration goes on at the finish line for the funny car champion, Dale Emery, we look back toward the starting line where the top fuel finals are being ready. The shadows of evening growing quite pronounced here after a brilliant winter day in Pomona, California with a temperature up into the 80s. The winner of the top fuel title will realize $13,400. Runner-up, $4,350. Gary Beck, the national champion at Indianapolis Raceway Park a year ago. He lost to Jerry Root in the finals of the World Finals in Amarillo, Texas. And on the left-hand side, it is Gary Beck of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, who wins it. And Gary Beck turns in another scorching run. 5.94 seconds, top end speed, 243.24 miles an hour. So Gary Beck not only posts the low ET of 5.842 seconds, the quickest run ever at Pomona, he also tops the meet at 243.24 miles an hour. So this young man from Canada, a native son of Seattle, Washington, defeats Jerry Ruth in the top fuel finals in a remarkable series of four straight runs under six seconds. Wow. You've got a fair to Midland streak going, young man. Oh, well, it's hard to believe, isn't it? That's unreal. I think we're going to see a pretty happy crew coming down here, let me tell you. Huh. Well, five, you did 594. Five, uh, what was the 18 this run? 590. Perfect. It's unbelievable. It was a bit of a handful out there in the middle, let me tell you. Uh, look at these guys. Here they are. <laughs> Well, well, I get to be a habit. <laughs> be it's a, habit. a good one, too, let me oh, tell you. You're doing a beautiful I job. I certainly appreciate racing in your races. They're always the best, uh, and I always enjoy them. We really can. We're proud of you, and everybody else you're racing. Well, Mr. Jerry Ruth coming over to congratulate him. Yeah, that's your turn. Next turn's mine. <laughs> How you doing? Do you, you believe we race? Yes, sir. Thank you. That was quite a shootout. For a broken piece of chunk, it didn't run bad. Where'd you run? I don't know. 21. 21. Again, another 20. Oh, that's the